Matt Shaw, how's it going? <laughs> really good, really good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Just introduce yourself, tell us uh, you know, the band you play in and your role, and tell us about your history in pipe bands. Well, I started in a band down in Finney Down called Upper Cross Gar. Started there with uh, David McKibben. He first started me, taught me for the first maybe year, year or two, and then I moved up at the time. Up across I started had the two bands. We had a good four band and a good three band. So okay. at the time I moved up to the good three and I started getting taught by Neil Lusher. And now how old were you at this time? I was twelve when I started. First year in high school, so it was that's when I started. I think it was okay. twelve. So it was, so I was a late bloomer. Okay. As most yeah, for up compared. here, right? Twelve yeah. is a late uh, bloomer. <laughs> it is late bloomer, so it is. Everybody's as soon as you're born, that's you, you're up. Right. Where you go. But uh started there and then spent spent a couple of seasons there and then Neil he was asked to take over a bar at the time. Mm -hmm. That was around just the end of the 2009 season. Okay. And he asked me to come up. And so that's when I moved up to Rivar for the 2010 season. And but more bits of it, I went to the, the school, the Pipe and Drum School at the time, learned how to read music along with Neil, because Neil would use music. That's mm -hmm. when I was first introduced to using music. And I went, first couple of years, I wouldn't have known <laughs> drum and needed music to do. Right. So that's when I started learning the school. And then gradually just started working my way through that and then up the Rivar for that year. And then a really really good successful year for our first year we won the europeans and won the world championships in our first year very good so i've sort of or i had much success back when we went across guard just sort of nothing really ever clicked and stuff so we never really knew much about success okay until i really moved up to Rivaran and you nearly won in every week and then and of sort course of, yeah and then so two years i was so spent 2010 and 2011 was two years spent in grade two and i got moved up to grade one for 2012. Mm -hmm. i was spent with Sort of hung about for a long, long enough time, right up to 2017, and sort of the band it just wasn't quite sort of hitting where we wanted to be. So mm -hmm. I think towards the end that season, with a couple of poor runs, sort of cost us our status in Grade One. So we went back down to Grade Two, and that's when I took over for the 2018 season. That's okay. when I took over the band. And so you've just been at the helm since 2018. 2018. Okay, yep, 2018. excellent. 2018. So since we're back in the Grade Two, I took it over again. So. A lot of guys that left, so it was a lot, and a lot of guys you try to get new guys in. People, anybody that came in my first year was nobody had played in grade one or grade two, and oh, like wow. it was all grade four and grade three numbers. Fresh stuff. guys, okay. So, one of the guys actually, his first competition, it was his first competition ever with us, it was his first ever, ever competition. I had taught him oh. before but outside the band, and he was doing bits and bobs, and I finally got him up the band to play, and that literally was his first ever competition, was going to stand wow. in grade two. Wow, on the play and look, at it, but one actually that day as well, one that the drumming that day. So, do you guys have every aspiration to get back to grade yeah, one? Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's my where I where we want to be. I think Excellent. same the band as well. No, sort of we're sort of good when we got down we get it, but not surprised at the same time. It happens, right? I mean, it seems like as if every pipe band in the world, large and small, goes through waves. Yeah, you know, it people's does, yeah. lives change, and that's you know things Northern happen. Arms, the worst for it. I mean. The amount of bands I've seen just went up or maybe came down and I folded. The amount mm. of bands, yeah, it's scary. The amount of bands that's the folded. worst, right? When that it's, it's really bad. You don't want to see it. Nobody, no. nobody ever wants to see it. The only thing a good thing to say about Rivar, no, we've we're still here. Yeah. That overall, like the amount of bands we played against in Good Two and Good One over the past, even even close to 10, 15, 20 years, yeah, have came up and down or are not there anymore. Wow. Like that's that's crazy. The amount of yeah. bands. So it's just the reason for that. You need a good strong family nucleus of players around a lot of the guys are all local mm. maybe valley Ground, though there's a lot of ones all in that area and then north down you talk about ards mm -hmm. there's a few from there and a few out sort of the other direction mm. so a lot of guys are pretty local like there's no i know a lot of bands like to bring in the guys from overseas sure we we've never really been an interest of ours okay we've talked about it but we've never really had that and anybody plays in the bands all from here so anytime you guys have maybe been in a slump or had less members you never got on the no. phone and started calling you just no. looked locally oh, always Excellent. always have looked local no it's to say no everybody has their idea of what they want to do and come sure. do it but no we've always looked i don't think we've ever had many overseas players that come in at all like okay I don't, so and you guys i mean rivara has a really long rich history in pipe bands can you tell us about that a little bit can you tell us about that awesome history of that organization well samuel our pipe major he's now like, he took over in 1987 i think it was wow through the day was a, there was a sudden death for the previous pipe major okay and so he was he was only 18 at the time until oh. the band sort of went right you're doing it so he's been there ever since, so he's been there a very long time. And wow. he, let's say once he started to take over, that's when the band started to rise. Okay. Right up, to, and then 
my dad he played in the bands he was a bass drum he played around sort of early 90s okay. and Bobby Ray actually came in at this time mm-hmm. that's when that the whole drumming side I think really started to take off and yeah. then towards I think it was 91 and 94 they won the, the world's drumming and the world's title those yeah. two years do you and remember that do you I, remember no when? I don't remember I'm just sort of going okay. oh, I know that when you gather up and you talk to people you, yeah. know, you know everybody anyway and 95 is when they hit grade one for the first mm-hmm. time and if you know held their own for maybe four or five years and back down mm-hmm. back down to grade two same idea I've had a few really good years a couple of good years and back up again for another couple I thought the past maybe 20 30 years the band's been up and down like a yo-yo yeah but again we're always still there so yeah and the matter we're rebuilding again to try to get that you're always again. still there and you're looking local and that's yeah certainly that's, that's going to be more always, consistent we've always yeah. been like that oh the band's always been like that and hopefully Next year or two, don't know. See how the results go for the rest of this year. Sure. And maybe next, see if we get back up again. But are that's... you guys how how focused are you on on the results? I mean, obviously, your big goal is back to grade one and sustain that. Well, you need the results to go. What I think they're always a priority is get the good performance and get yeah. everybody on the right play well. We know we can play well in the hall. You know, everyone's probably at their best in the hall. Yeah just need to bring it on and even outside in the final tuning the bands there's been many weeks we've been really really good outside mm. I just haven't carried it into the ring Yeah, and it's cost us in results but once we do get those performances in the ring it, it pays off we, do, we have got this back end of the season I think uh, the band's only been beat once so it has only, and the drum corps hasn't been beat for the last four or five contests so it hasn't Excellent. so we're on a good roll at the moment that's cool and you said an interesting thing earlier today when we were talking about um, what the procedure for the drum corps is on the day. That some corps play every oh, second. Right. They get off the bus, they're playing, then they're in the circle. Because yep. that seems to work for them. And you yep. guys take a completely we different were approach. Complete, uh, recently, we very much the opposite. We, we'll give ourselves a time to meet at. Say mm-hmm. we're on at 3 o'clock, we'll meet an hour and a half before it. Mm-hmm. But that's For us, the matter is just gathering ourselves up. All depends on the weather as well. The weather's sure. like out there. We're not going to do a terrible lot for a start. But even... Right. Make sure everybody's there, gather up, talk for a bit, sort of look around and say, right, we'll actually yeah. maybe do something here. We'll maybe play a couple of wee sets, just something to warm the hands up, get mm-hmm. everybody going, get in the idea. Then we'll start having maybe one or two runs over what we're playing on the day. Yeah. And if we're happy enough with it, we'll set the drums away okay. until the pipers call us over and we'll have a couple of wee runs with them and then away we go. So you guys take a really relaxed approach Definitely, to the day. Definitely, I think that's for us. But this, maybe I think it's a couple of contests at the start of the year. I think Paisley we went to and warmed up, did the same idea, mm. had a wee run, really good. Started to go to the final tune, a couple of wee nips and started mm. to come in and sort of got maybe a wee bit panicky. So we decided to start going, running over stuff, running over, trying to for, change the, you know, but we're sort of more forcing more errors than rather than mm. fixing them. Mm-hmm. So we learned the lesson that day, so I realised, no, just once, if a couple of things come in, we'll just sort of back away from it let everybody sort of chill out for another yeah because maybe when you start going over and people start hearing more mistakes I think nerves well yeah like everybody has nerves uh, most people so rather than try to keep forcing the thing and you give people more nerves so step away from it let them calm down a bit and hopefully they come back maybe five times later they'll come back and it's for it's sure go, it's gone yeah and is, th- is this process you guys have now was it like this when you joined back in 2010 has this always it has, been it has but it's never really been too hard no Depends what sort of mood we're in. Sure, really, right. that always comes to mind. Depends on the weather as well. If yeah, the weather's yeah. bad, we're going to do as little as possible. Yeah, sunny day, we'll go out and play because we want to stand out in the sun and play for a bit. But yep. no, it's been pretty relaxed. Like we're never doing an hour, maybe max, even hour and a half if we're really pushing it. For I think we need a. But ju- a Rivara team for you has never been one that's off the bus and just playing all day. No, that's never been so. the vibe for only you Only time, actually, well, only time because we went to Dumbarton this year, but we're off the bus. We're all quite an early draw, so we had to get off, get changed and get start playing because okay. we're only on and maybe an hour and a half after getting off the bus. So, so you got no choice. So we had to yeah. do it, but re- any time we just sort of, I uh, just sort of down our right a bit, get ourselves, well, everybody chilled out, get themselves fed and watered. Excellent. And we'll come back and see where we're at. It's important, right? It's important to be really 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 sensitive to what what your team needs to be at their best you know and again some teams need to just be playing 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 all day yeah, some do, some. and yeah some don't some just need to relax and stay, you know, stay focused you need yeah. that, for that you need to know your players yes a lot yeah. of our guys know the drum court we're all normal people if mm-hmm. you know what i mean there's no professional musicians in right. the band it's just all everybody has their daytime job sure and they take out of their own 
time to come up with band practice and play what they want to do because it's yeah. their hobby. It's not yeah. it's not their they're going to add it twenty four seven all the way. No, right. they're all just normal people to do yeah. practice. They'll maybe do a few hours a week. That's about all they can manage. For sure, but work and other commitments. So there's that, and it's important that they, it's that they're comfortable that they have fun. Yeah. On that, the day. That's the main yeah. thing as well. Like no, I know I can be sort of a drumaholic. I can want to drum, and I want to hear everything. If it's not perfect, it's not good. That's right. The sort of sometimes right. I and sometimes I overdo that attitude, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I sort of start the rest. Of them sort of going getting all sort of uptight. So. If I'm relaxed, I think everybody else is sort of pretty relaxed too. Absolutely. That's the main thing. And how about you and uh, you and your pipe major, you know, the leadership team of the band? Um, I mean, we all know it's super important that the leadership is on the same page, yeah. you know, that you agree musically what you want to do and you agree how you want to, you know, operate the personnel. Well, how has that working environment been for you guys? He's, Samuel, he, the pipe major, he's as relax as I am sometimes. Sometimes you can't get uptight, you get shady and all that. But generally we're with the same idea where we come sometimes when we we'll start off the day or band practice we'll bring the tempos down, just get everything mm-hmm. opened up mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. we'll see when we hit the ring, that's when we'll bring it. Yeah. But the best way to put it, I'll if I feel it's gonna be coming down too much, mm-hmm. I'll give them a wee sort of kick yeah. up and away we go again. So <laughs> but it's the same way but we're very relaxed, we sort we understand each other, we're not we're not there's very little sort of disagreements. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, most of us in North America that, that are in pipe bands, we maybe know the name Bobby Ray, and we know that he was a huge influence yep. and helped shape a lot of drumming up here. And, you know, here we are in Belfast, and there's too many awesome drummers for us to make time for, you know, which is so <laughs> cool. And and uh, we hear the name Bobby Ray, we hear the name Galvin Bailey mm-hmm. all the time. Tell yep. us about those guys. Them too. Well, like I say, they're probably the biggest influence, especially Bobby. You know, he's taught probably half the country and anybody he's taught has taught somebody else after mm. that. I unfortunately never got a chance to get taught by Bobby. I was, he passed away just sort of when I was really getting mm. into my, but uh, Neil, my previous leading drummer, he was taught by Bobby when he played in the Rivara Corps back in the 90s and there, cool. when he when Bobby was the leading drummer. Yeah. And many, probably many of the drummers you've talked to, you know, like Sigarf and all them, and they've all been taught by him. They know yeah. him inside out. His scores have sort of lasted the test of time. Yep. Like Duthard, know a lot of his yep. scores, have all lasted the test of time. And there's all variations of his scores been still being played. No, like I say, we're, we're playing that Baba Waterloo score again. Yeah, just not that it's it's just a fun thing to play for a four four rather than play just your usual mass band or play something that's that, you no know, something that's just really fun and keeps yeah. you on your toes. Man, when when I hear Bobby Ray music or Bobby Ray influenced music, let's say guys from the Bobby Ray school, I mean the first thing I, I think is my my goodness that's a lot of notes, which is cool. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be notes for the sake of notes. I mean mm-hmm. it clear it clearly still follows the melody yep. and it has its it it is its own language. It has mm-hmm. its own flow that's very, very distinct. Um, do you think that there's there's room for that sort for that sort of density for that sort of character in grade one and grade two in the high competition bands now? I, there's still that. Well, there's still that influence. I think you no know, likes uh, recently, you no know, with Keith being with female yeah. and us you no know, Rivar as well. Yeah. I haven't you no know, been influenced by all that. No, all this sort of stuff still there. Yeah, and there's still. All the stuff now is just a, a different variation of Bobby's. Mm. There's still that sort of those uh, phrases and things yeah. that still pop up. But you know that's Bobby's. What's something we could listen to to go, that's clearly either a Bobby Ray phrase or a Bobby Ray influenced well, thing? Well, more, more, maybe not as us recent, but with our maybe about five to, we still, our Lord Alex score, I like okay. it was still Bobby's score right Ooh. up until maybe four or five years ago. Okay. Now that's, he played that score, I think the band said, the band's played a lot for a good 30 years, like sure. that. Yeah. And maybe 20 of them was all up in Bobby scores. Wow. Bobby scored it. So there's still, like, say, if you know Bobby stuff, you will you can pick up, you know, you'll get the idea from it. But, like, say, anybody knows Three Masco stuff or McGuire stuff, yeah. they all know those phrases. Yeah. It's just, you have, you have you do have to know it yourself. Sure. Have to play maybe a few scores to get them the idea. Like, there's maybe a few phrases that's played in that Battle of score that actually comes out in a lot of the March playing. Yeah. Group before you'll hear those phrases over again. Yeah. That, because the fact that it just works with the chin. For sure. And, what, and, and they really guy. do. It just it, it's something that it, it's a mix, it's a recipe that has its own character that's different from a lot of the other mm-hmm. influential guys, which is super important. So you obviously were influenced from the you know the Bobby Ray school. Uh, who are who are some other other either drummers or bands or musicians that's helped shape you into the musician you are Sorry, today? Better everybody. I uh, when I started my college time, no one had time to sort of a bit more do more practice on what I usually do. Uh, 
I would have sort of looked on the internet for different scores. There's a couple mm. of different people that had everybody's scores, and mm. it just it helped me my sight reading and my you know, working yeah. out. And just bits and pieces, and you start going up, and like your stuff as well. Mm. When I put, you put the score videos up, yeah. you sort of bits and pieces like that. No, you start hearing them and your own scores. Yeah. You go, no, you're not trying to copy the score, but you just trying sure. to use that as a me phrases here and there, just yeah. to use it the same. So it's it's great to know what what other people are doing. Everybody, you know? I, that's the way I just whatever I think come, feels right for the tune. Awesome. No, sometimes I maybe feel you can hear a tune. It's a completely different style of what they played the tune before, but yeah. it's just whatever I feel for the the tune at the time. For sure, and I I think a lot of either uh, beginners and by beginners I mean new to pipe bands, kids, adults, whatever. I, I think everyone gets that message. You have to know the tune, and mm -hmm. so I think any person can logically say, okay, I have to either be able to sing it, whistle it, hum it, think it, whatever. But then when it comes to fitting the drumming to the piping, I find that to be one of the most common things that uh, lower grade players or beginner players struggle with yeah because i i think that most players out there in pipe bands especially perhaps especially in north america i, I don't think they're surrounded by this awesome yeah. tight community of just uh, you know monster players yeah. everywhere so let's say someone is really into this really into pipe bands they're following the instruction on rhythm monster wherever and they are still having trouble understanding mm -hmm what you just said yep. it fits the tune yep. what would you advise to well, some beginner players sort of this wraps up toward why i write tunes why i teach a good four band uh i when i'm asked when i'm writing a new tune for a new school or for a new tune i'll ask for the pipe and music as well mm -hmm. and i'll take all the mel the pitch notes and the embellishments out and just mm -hmm. leave the bare monotone mm -hmm. rhythm mm -hmm. and that's where i can sort of base it around it and see when you play that monotone rhythm I sort of try to get them, the, the learners to sort of, when you start hearing these monotone, you're going to hear it in the tune, and then yeah. you're going to hear it in the score. Yeah. You'll hear the similarities. You can only go, well, you can only so, so far, yeah. because so many phrases you can play within right. that certain uh, monotone rhythm. So if they can sort of get that, the monotone rhythm, I think is the important one between that, because it sort of sure. links the two together. Right. Like when you take all embellishments and pitch notes out of drumming and piping, right. you're just left with your basic monotone rhythm. Mm -hmm. So if if you can understand the monotone rhythm of every tune right. or what you're looking at, mm -hmm. especially for two, four marches, when you're just playing maybe simple quavers and then the dot and cut quavers, yeah. it's generally going to be that general. If you can pick that up and get used to playing that, you'll feel the, the timing and the rhythm for the drum score. I think that's great advice, man, because, you know, if you're, if you're new to pipe bands, obviously the really unique thing about listening to bagpipe music is the embellishments. Mm -hmm. But you're saying don't start with the embellishments. In fact, get rid of them yep. and just focus on that primary rhythm yep. or that monotone rhythm. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. No, that's, that's your basic rhythm. That's why you're going to play it. No, you can, you can play a tune without embellishments. Yeah. No, you can't play a tune without your basic rhythm. You that's just, right. You know, the embellishment on its own, there is yep. nothing to it. So that's right. Of course, there's a few embellishments and stuff that's going to change the... Sure. A couple of notes for me to feel you're going to, yeah. have to put more in it or put less in or whatever. When you start digging in, sure, the embellishments are super important to understand yep. with more advanced um, rudiments mm -hmm. and, and things. Yep. But you're totally right. If you're just starting out and you want to understand how to write or how to fit the drumming to the piping, I think that's great advice. Ignore those embellishments yep. at first. Just take it all and Just get that going. Just the basic. Well, if you get the basic rhythm, you have half, you're halfway there. Absolutely. Then you can start adding in your own embellishments and what do you think suits. Yeah, for the notes, no. You higher, you can. All depends what the notes of the chanter, and you could be on low notes. You might feel something sits different there rather than yeah. playing on the top hand of the chanter. It's all just all what what you feel. As sure. Well. No, it can be musically quiet, but sometimes it might not just get that feel. Yeah. So it's all again comes down to your own interpretation as well as that. But if you Absolutely. get the basic rhythm, I think you're half the battle. You're going to be halfway there. I agree. So I know a lot, you know, I remember when I first started writing pipe band drumming or I was seeing a lot of other guys writing for, let's say, grade five, grade four. If you wrote a drum score that was very, very attached to the monotone rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, the comment would always be, it sounds old school. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think, well, now, especially if you're a grade five and a grade four band, go sound old school and sound yep, good, yep. you know, play yeah. together and yep. be old school if that's, that's what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. No, all. not and at all. Once you start developing yourself that sound, you can start to yes. sort of show your flair and yep. what you can do and sort yep. of outside the box. Yep. It, rather than just playing safe as such. Absolutely. I know there's still bands in Great Thieve and Great Two still now. It's still I think it's still playing 
old school, safe. Yeah, uh, not know. playing, you know, the greatest density out there. For no, sure. no, I think that especially when it had to be a two, I would argue say we're probably one of some of the hardest material in the grade. Yeah, I would <laughs> sort of. I have no interest in playing easy stuff to try and win contests. And a yeah. lot of bands when we think this, we'll just play something simple. We can play it right and yeah. we'll win every contest. But I have no interest, and in I'd rather play something really hard and try and get it. Sure. It's more so for the entertainment excitement factor as well. Absolutely. And you obviously have... you've got a guy like you who's super experienced and you've got an awesome team behind you. So you guys have, you know, the skill yeah. to pull that off. As some of the guys, and when they know I'm writing a new score, they sort of look at it first and they nearly have a heart attack before they say it. <laughs> but even before you even try learning it. Like that, that part, when I played that last part, John Morris, and the first mm -hmm. two bars is the buzzy part of it. Yep. They sort of looked at first and nearly want to scrap the beer and chuck it out the road. <laughs> Tell us, right, give it a chance, would you exactly. give us a couple of nights out? And sort of gradually, oh, okay, we got the idea, and then we'll cut round to it. But there's many times the past you know, years, you know, we'll sort of lead and drum our hands out the music and we'll look at it, then, no, nah, <laughs> where you go. I just said, we're not playing that, just not happening. Well, but, I mean, especially for you guys, you know, you guys have. You know, a, a really a really big challenge of getting back to grade one and sustaining grade one, and you know you you have to do something that that sets you apart because man, I know that everyone likes to focus on grade one all the time, yeah. but I dare say that the competition at the worlds in grade two might actually be more difficult. There's just more There's more bands that are that more are bands. It's a lot more diverse. No, yeah. That's, uh, us at the minute, you no, know, between there's the Northern Ireland bands are dominating grade two at the minute, mm -hmm. and Scotland have a few bands just sitting on the outside waiting. Though there could be any time they could pounce, so right. I think they just right. maybe haven't hit the full throttle the way. That's maybe. right. And then we haven't really heard much the North American bands that came over and the Australian bands that come over. So this is yeah. all been the sort of brand new sort of. Yeah. So we don't know what we're, what's going to hit us. Yeah. You know, this could be a complete shock to all of us, or. Maybe we can get any other go. We don't know. We really but you guys know. are going to go be you no matter what, that, That's right? the way where we know what we know. What we can do and know how to get there. And we just need to do it at the right time. That's awesome. I'm not, none of the guys are concerned how well the other bands are playing or what these other bands are going to sound like. Right. We're just going to keep doing what we do. Awesome. So I think that's... Do you think that's good advice for lower grade bands as well? Yeah, you just go out and do what you do. You know, uh, you're not always going to get the rub of the green. Or you're going to get the results. And so there's going to be weeks you think you played really well and you're going to be last. I've had my fair share of it. It happens. You just have to keep it. As long as you're happy with the way you use your plan and you're developing yourself. Yeah. You know, that's the main thing. That's the way I look at the, my good four band with Major Sinclair. No, the good four, you want to develop, mm -hmm. play well, and you want to push up yourself in the good three band. Mm -hmm. You get a few results along the way, that's your bonus. Yeah, that's, that's the, the bonus, way, exactly. That's the bonus. You want to develop and keep the thing going. That's what you're looking to do. There's no I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that's a, a really important balance to find. Of course, this is a it's a competitive activity. Yes. yes. Oh yes. But like you said before, you know, I mean, people by and large do pipe bands. You're not doing it professionally. You're doing it because it's fun. Yep, it's, a it's your hobby. It's it's what you do when yep. when you're not at work. Yep. And you know, I think that any of us can fall prey to making the reason we do this all about the competition. Yep and not about everything else. Yep. And, and I, I mean, to me, I think that's really sad if, if any of us, because we, we've all been there. We, we've all get gotten wrapped up in that. Yep. But at the end of the day, you could be the best pipe band on the planet and those, those four guys walking around the circle just might not agree. Yep. And that shouldn't dictate the entire experience, no, you know? You should, no, you should have fun playing with your bandmates. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the main thing. If you're not having fun, you shouldn't be there. It's so true, man, and it's tough. I, I think it's tough to find that balance, but I, yep. I, I think that we need we need to have those conversations. Yeah, I yeah, think we definitely. need to remind each other, remind ourselves, yep. remind our teams that this is music, this is fun. We get to make yep. loud noises outside yep. together, go have a beer afterwards. Yep. The whole definitely. family gets to participate. Yep. I mean, that's awesome. I there that's are not a lot of musical activities out there that you can, that you can that. say that No, you about. can't do that. I don't think it really is. No, there is. Well, the schools over here, I think it's a big thing. No, they're not, the pipe and drumming isn't a, a yeah. part of schools in Northern yeah. Ireland. It's all about everything. No, the first thing you learn in primary school is you're given a recorder. Mm. And see, by a couple of weeks later, it's no use anyway because you've forgotten about it. It's not fun. And then you learn some stuff for the orchestra. You're handed a violin, mm. you're handed a trumpet, all that. Yep. Carry on. See, once you leave school, you forget it. Yep. Because you have to go join a big orchestra if you want to continue that. That's right. There's nothing really else. We do have, no, we have flip bands, silver bands, sure. accordion bands all around here, sure. which are just as strong as sure. pipe bands, but I think pipe bands are still, there's just something completely different and unique about it. There is, man, and I, and I think we take this for granted. I think we take for granted 
why we join pipe bands and what it is compared to so many other musical activities. It's a it's a really special thing, and mm -hmm. we sh should treat it that way. And for me, spending time with you guys here in Belfast, finally up close and personal, I mean, it's it's a it's a pleasure to see that that's clearly here in mm -hmm. your culture. You know, you're all super competitive and super, yeah. you know, uh, striving for excellence, of course, yeah. but. Uh, that's not the center of your universe. No. You know, it really is something more meaningful, and it, yep. there's a balance there that, that uh, from what I see, is struck, and that, mm -hmm. that it's a real pleasure to see. Yeah. Before we wrap up, because I think we have seconds here. Cool. <laughs> what does it, what does being a monster drummer mean to you? To us, well, <laughs> same way we say our our we sort of motto is that we call it breaking the noise. It says that how monster drummers we bring the noise to the day. So I like that. We just want to go for it. Monster drummers are those who bring, bring the, the noise. noise. That's it. I'll take that. That's awesome. That'll do. Man, Matt Shaw, yes. this has been a pleasure, my yes, man. Thank you very much. Thank you thank so you very much. Yes, thank it's you. It's been great.